Warm. Tabile Warm joins me in studio now. Thanks so much for your time on SABC News. What are you expecting from the State of the Nation address later on today? Uh, thank you for, very much for inviting us. Um, our expectations is uh, um, are centered around clarity on policy, uh, a strong and harsh stance on governance. And you might have seen what has happened in the SOEs where governance has been trampled upon over the past um, few years. Uh, the board appointments uh, where there seem to be less support in terms of what the companies should be doing. As a result, we have seen so many operational inefficiencies, uh, financial inefficiencies. Uh, some SOEs have gone down uh, in terms of profitability. So we'd love to, we'd love to uh, hear uh, more from the president speaking strongly on that in terms of you know, how best he's going to bring back these companies into shape. Obviously, when they are liquid and solvent, they are therefore attractive to um, capital markets in terms of borrowing. Mm -hmm. Well, let's look a little bit further on then Sona budgets coming up on the 21st. What are you expecting to hear from Finance Minister Malusi Gigaba when that happens? Uh, number one, where is he going to get uh, the money to fund the deficit? Is he going to uh, tax um, the residents or the inhabitants that are, that are already stretched? Uh, or he's going to uh, go to corporate and increase uh, the COP taxes? Obviously, if he does that, how then do we begin to manage such finances? Mm -hmm. Or if he tempers with that, uh, to what extent, how much uh, percentage will he push uh, the VAT up by? So those are the topical things that we'll be watching uh, strongly. And then the other thing, um, uh, to fund um, the funds for the, you know, the free education that was announced by the outgoing president, you know, how is he planning to raise those funds? Mm -hmm. you know? So those to me or to the organization are the key things that we'll be looking at um, uh, strongly. As an organization, how, if any way, do you lobby and interact with government so that these views that you're saying are not just heard perhaps on a television interview, but communicated directly to the source? As the BMF, we do meet um, with, 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 with any you know, government bodies as and when there is a need. Uh, we have engaged the ruling government uh, in the past, uh, more especially them uh, building up to their policy conference sometime last year to say, you have issued or published uh, the, 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 um, your economic policy as BMF, these are our views. We have presented those views uh, to the government of the ANC. In fact, when it comes to transformation, we have gone to parliament to say, uh, the financial services sector is not transformed and, and we've tabled our views. So we do engage government and we do engage the, 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 the ruling elite. On top of that, we do participate in round tables where business uh, meets to discuss you know, any given policy that informs how the country uh, go, um, um, goes forward. Mm. I've seen a press release from BMF congratulating President Cyril Maposa on being president of South Africa, but we haven't really seen anything um, before that. So I'd like to ask, what do you make of the political events that led up to Cyril Maposa uh, becoming president? Um, our country has been, has been riddled by so many ills over the past uh, so many years, and uh, we have lost our economic fortunes. At some point, we were averaging over 2% in terms of our GDP, um, GDP growth rate, and that has gone down to less than a percent. To an extent of we're still uh, projecting less than a percent for the next two years. And the other thing, uh, the unemployment um, numbers haven't improved over the past three years, four years, five years, right? And inequality has widened, you know? And at the back of it all, the people that tend to suffer, it's black people, you know? that remain marginalized, that are playing outside of the mainstream economy. You go to corporate, you find that uh, the companies have been transformed, and we know that with inclusivity, you know, that therefore brings in so many people into mainstream economy, and you tend to shrink or reduce uh, the inequality levels of which those things haven't really happened. Mm -hmm. Very briefly, because we are at the end of our interview now, you've spoken about these problems, but some things like in unemployment have stayed the same uh, since 2003. It's not just a, a short space of time. What do you as a BMF think you can do to take that 
holistic problem and work on it uh, instead of just looking at perhaps government interactions and those business interactions? Uh, we do that uh, through our engagements with Corporate SA uh, to say we can see that you have opened up the space uh, in terms of black people are represented, you know, mm -hmm. uh, in junior management levels, in middle management levels. But then how do we ensure that we capacitate these people in terms of, you know, uh, starting to occupy now the senior as well as top level, um, uh, top management levels. And with that, what, what that does is when you're opening up the space, you are therefore uh, empowering people, you know, empowering companies to grow because there's power in diversity. And those are some of the things, soft things, uh, which are so critical because when we talk economic growth, when we talk development, we don't talk diversity, which is so important. And with diversity, you, 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 you sort of, um, that has a positive influence to firm value. And you know, when companies grow, they tend to absorb. Uh, more employees, which will then address uh, the unemployment um, issue. Tabele Wong from BMF, thanks so much for your time on SABC News. It's time for a short